For the longest time now, I've been wanting to get the Modbot robot mascot made into a 3D model. A long time ago, I did uh, attempt to make a version of him in Fusion 360, but most of what I do is with hard surfaces for kind of practical or functional parts, and I was just never really happy with the results that I was able to get by trying to model them up myself. So last year, I reached out to my friends over at Chaos Cortec and asked if they would be willing to model him for me. And if you don't know who they are, I've talked about them many times on this channel, but if you are looking for absolutely awesome 3D models to print out, they've also got a YouTube channel I will link you guys to uh, in the description of this video. But they did end up modeling two versions of him, one that is a complete head, body, toes, uh, that prints in one which does require supports and a supportless version where the head prints separately and then you can glue the head on top of the body. And I wasn't sure originally how I was going to do this, but I decided to go ahead and release both models uh, for free for anyone to be able to download and print. So I will place links down below in the description. If you do end up printing one of these out, be sure to share uh, a photo of the print over in the Modbot Army Discord. It has been growing a ton over the last couple of weeks and we recently crossed 200 members. I have been so stoked to see the conversations, people helping each other and all the projects over there. So links will also be down below to the uh, Discord if you wanna join that and get the conversation going. I ended up printing a massive version of the two-part or supportless version on the Ender 5 Plus that I glued together and I printed a large version on the Phenom printer behind me, which is actually what gave me the idea for this video. Two years ago, when I was kind of getting familiarity with resin 3D printing and people were getting more into resin 3D printing, I made a video that went over the chit box slicer workflow. And so I decided to kind of update that video, but make it targeted towards people with large form factor resin 3D printers. So in today's video, I will take you guys through setup to importing models, hollowing the models, adding drain holes, adding supports, and of course the actual printing process. I even decided to take you guys along for the post-processing where I fill those drain holes, do some sanding, and do some painting. So there is a ton to cover I'm really excited to get into. So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. So if you have not selected your printer in Chitu Box, all you have to do is click the settings button, which will pop open the window for settings. And in the top left, there is like a uh, new icon. If you click that, it'll open up with all of the printers built into Chitu Box. Luckily, just about all of the common ones or the most popular ones are in here. So I scroll down to Pia Poly, selected Phenom, and then OK. Doing that will populate all of the printer settings. There's also a few different resin profiles. The depth resin profile is the one I recommend for standard model resins. It's pretty much what I've used for just about all my printing and I've had really good success with it. You can play around with these settings as much as you want, but if you are new, uh, I do think that leaving things as is is your best bet. And these built-in settings have proven to, uh, again, be very reliable and consistent for most of my printing. Once done, we'll go ahead and import our model. In this instance, it's going to be the Modbot robot. Uh, the top leftmost blue button will open up where you can then select which model you want to import. The next thing I did was scaled up the model to 300%. If you just click on your model so it selects it, on the left side there is a scale window and you have the option to uniform scale or uh, you can just scale in one direction. So in this instance, I want to scale them up 300%. So I just typed in 300 and it went ahead and scaled them up to that size, um, taking advantage of the large uh, format that the Phenom printer provides. So uh, again, I wanted to do a very large version. Then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate him. You have a couple options. You can drag these different rings. You can uh, click the buttons to rotate him by 45 degrees in whichever direction you want. Or you can also type in a specific degree that you wanna rotate by. So uh, in this instance, I felt it was easiest to just click the 45 degree adjustments. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tilt him on his back. And I'm doing this for two reasons. One, his feet are really small, so if I printed him standing upright, uh, there's a good chance that there could be some issues with ad adhesion to the build plate. And the other thing, which is a huge factor, is print time. Because these printers cure or print layer by layer, the taller the print, the longer the print time. So standing up, it's a 52 hour and 32 minute print. And by pivoting him on his side, the time drops down to 44 hours and 40 minutes, which eight hours is a pretty substantial time savings. And if you're doing lots of prints, whether it's for 
uh, you know, something you're selling or um, some small run production, that can make a huge difference. The next thing we are going to be doing is hollowing out the model. So there's a button on the top, and if you click that, it will open up the little window. And you'll want to make sure it's at least two and a half millimeters. I opted for three and a half millimeters because this is a fairly large part. I want to make sure that I've got enough strength in the walls. And the main reason we're doing this really is just to cut down on resin consumption. His head is a huge block, and if we didn't hollow him out, it would take a ton of resin to print out his head. So by doing this, we're going to be saving money uh, and by not using as much resin. Now, if you're printing out a part that's going to have a functional application, perhaps you may want to leave it solid or do things a bit differently. But for prototypes, for character models, things like that, where you're just really wanting to save on cost, um, hollowing is huge and definitely something that you'll want to get very familiar with. So once you click start, it will slowly hollow the model and you can kind of see as it goes. And then if you want to check to make sure it hollowed correctly, you can also drag the slider on the right hand side up and down uh, and that'll allow you to jog the different layers and just kind of make sure that everything went correctly with the hollowing process. And then just to give you an idea, when I slice this model up after being hollowed versus not being hollowed, the resin savings was 867 milliliters if it was solid to down to 255 milliliters, which is insane. That is such a big deal. And again, that's why you want to get familiar with the hollowing of the models for uh, a lot of your general prints. Now that we've hollowed the model, we also need to add some drain holes. And I recommend anywhere between three to four uh, millimeters for these larger parts. And to add them, you just click on the button for hollowing on the top, click add holes, and then you can just click around where you want them. And we're doing this for two reasons. One, because we hollowed this model out, if we don't add holes, there will be uncured resin inside of the model. And so these holes will allow the IPA to flow in when we're cleaning it and the uh, uncured resin to flow out. But also, which is a even bigger reason, is for the pressure that builds up inside of the printed part. The suction force of the FEP um, curing and releasing after each layer is more than enough to cause your part to potentially deform or even worst case scenario, pull off of the build plate altogether. So by adding these holes, we are helping to alleviate that, that pressure or that tension buildup inside of the printed part. So again, it, it is... Uh, definitely important for the sake of getting uncured resin out, but uh, it plays a huge factor in keeping your parts from uh, deforming or coming off of the build plate altogether and, you know, basically sticking inside of the vat. I recommend as a minimum at least having two holes. In this instance, I did four because there was a large empty cavity, which was his head. Um, so two holes for there. And then his body, because it was another uh, kind of large open cavity, I went ahead and added two additional there. Each part will really vary, but as a minimum, you should definitely do at least two drain holes on your model. Next up is supports, and so we'll go ahead and click on the support tab. If you're coming from FDM printing, do not worry. Resin prints, uh, the supports are a hell of a lot easier to remove, so don't worry about that. When you click on the support tab, it'll show you kind of the red areas that it thinks need supports. And I've actually found that the default heavy supports work incredibly well. I used to have like a custom support profile I used, and then after a few Chitu Box updates when I lost it, I ended up using the heavy supports uh, by default, and they worked really well. I also recommend the raft um, just to give your parts some added adhesion to the build plate and the standard Z offset which I believe is five millimeters where it basically lifts your part off the build plate also works really well. So in this instance I went ahead and just clicked the uh, to platform button which will automatically generate supports to the platform as you can see here and like I said it's really easy to remove supports on most resin prints so in this instance I'm actually going to add some more there's a delete button and an add button um, on the bottom of the support panel and so you can click supports that you don't think you need and they'll highlight in red. You can either hit the delete key to remove them or click the delete button again to remove them. And on the left side of that is the add support button. So in this instance, I would rather have extra supports and use a little more resin than lose my print. So I see these delicate fingers, which didn't get a support generated likely due to the angle that they're printing at. I went ahead and added some supports there as well as to his arm. All you have to do is click and it'll go ahead and place them. And then he's got a huge empty spot on the back of his head where there's no supports. And yes, there's a chance that it could be fine printing this angle without supports, but because of the fact that his head is hollowed and I don't want to risk having any sort of deforming on his head, I just went ahead and clicked and added a bunch of supports. Possibly a bit overkill, but again, I've had supports 
Uh, I've had prints where there's not enough supports and it can really deform from the FEP uh, releasing and and uh, basically curing each layer. So I went ahead and decided to give them a little bit of backup and then again just kind of browsed around to make sure everything looked good. Uh, and overall I was really happy with the supports. The raft, if it shows red, it means that it's outside of your build plate. However, I've printed plenty of times with the raft outside of the build plate. It just kind of cuts it off when you slice it. So don't worry if that's the case. It's not going to have any negative effect on your print. And once you're ready to go, we'll go ahead and head back over to the uh, main tab and then hit slice. It'll let you know that, hey, something's outside of the build area. It's just that raft, like I said, in the red. No big deal. And we are ready to slice up our print. Once sliced, you just go ahead and save it onto the SD card and we will go ahead and plug this into our printer. For our resin, I am gonna be using the Soraya Tech Fast Translucent Black. The Fast series of resin has become one of my absolute favorites. It's pretty low odor, it prints great, and has awesome detail, and so uh, I was really excited to actually use this, uh, actually Smoky Black, I think is its official term. So I went ahead and shook the bottle up uh, really well, which is something you wanna do, and I poured in the entire bottle. Now, this is way more than I actually needed for the print, however, with the large resin printers, you should always have excess resin. It basically acts as a, a heat removal for the LCD screen. Because the LCD screen creates so much heat as it's printing, you want to make sure that you've got excess resin in there to help remove some of that heat and make sure you're getting the uh, most life out of that LCD panel. So uh, definitely do not let your large resin printers run dry. So once I had it filled up, I went ahead and hit print and I waited patiently for I think 44 hours for this print to uh, basically print and I was really excited kind of watching it go again this ModBot model I've had uh, for quite some time now I think I got the f finished model back in November and have really been wanting to do a large resin print of it but held off until now so Two days later, I was greeted with a beautiful finished print. I was super stoked with how it was looking, hanging on there, and went ahead and just used a spatula to kind of help pry it off, and then I threw it into my tub of IPA. Um, I've got basically just a large tub of IPA that I uh, purchased from, I think, Big Lots, and I went ahead and submerged it in there as much as I could. I didn't actually have enough to cover the whole part with the supports, so I went ahead and used my hand to kind of uh, tear back and forth on the supports and like I said supports on these resin prints are pretty easy to remove uh, The feet were a little bit close to the base So I did have to actually snap the the skirt off of his feet But as far as the supports go, it was a piece of cake to just remove them with my hand I didn't have to actually use any cutting tools or anything like that Once the supports were done. I just went ahead and kept dunking him in the IPA I used my hands to rub the surface as much as I could with the gloves of course to help remove any loose resin So I let him sit in the IPA for about 15 minutes and I did shake the tub uh, just a little bit to kind of help agitate the part It's something that I've sort of always done just a couple of times uh, And once that was done he was clean I took him out of that tub and I tried my best to grab some paper towels and dry off all of the IPA before it was time to cure him. Now, most instances I use either some kind of curing setup that I have like the uh, anti-cubic washing cure station or I've got my own kind of curing setup, but because of how big this part was and actually the Phenom, uh, in my opinion, produces parts that are really close to being cured fresh out of the uh, printer, I just actually used a little bit of sunlight. I did 15 minutes on the front, 15 minutes on the back, and that was more than enough to make sure that he was uh, nice and cure and done, ready for handling. So that just about covers my standard workflow for large resin 3D printers. However, I did continue on and uh, fill the holes, do some sanding and some painting. So for those of you that want to see that as well, we will do that now. So I rolled out the Wham Bam Extra Large Slap Mat, which is awesome for resin printing. And it is also great for just general purpose crafting and I went ahead and took some baking soda from the kitchen as well as some of the Bob Smith super glue that I am a huge fan of and I've talked about a few times and we are going to be using this to fill these holes now there are other things you can do some people I've seen use the actual resin and then a small little like handheld UV light source to cure um, the, the cure those spots instantly this is something that I had laying around the house, which is why I opted to use it. I just fill the holes with a little bit of super glue, and then the baking soda acts as a catalyst to just about instantly pad that super glue and to help uh, cure it or dry it right away. And then I used my hands to just help brush it in and scoop away any extra. 
because I'm going to be post-processing this or like sanding it down and painting it, I'm not worried about the super glue smearing or as you can see kind of like the white um, clouds being caused by the baking soda. I just wanted to make sure that I filled those holes all the way. And so I rinsed and repeated just again, dab a little dab of super glue, doing your best to fill that hole, a ton of baking soda. So make sure that you also fill it and then just rub it uh, back and forth to make sure that you've got it nice and filled in there. And if you need to, you can always apply a second coat. If for some reason you haven't covered the entire uh, draining hole, you can use a second coat as well. Once that was done, I grabbed some sandpaper using what I had around the house. I had a, had 150 grit, which is what I initially used to sand away at the uh, super glue and baking soda that went where it wasn't supposed to. So I just went back and forth on all of those different spots. I will say right away that I am not a big post-processing person of prints. Uh, I've done a little bit with FDM and I am not a very patient person. And Post-processing resin prints is a hell of a lot easier. This stuff just sands so much nicer than any of the FDM prints that I have ever uh, attempted to post-process. So once done with 150 grit, I took some 400 grit sandpaper, which is what I had laying around, and just kind of went over everything a little bit more. Um, I used this to try to remove as many of the support pegs as I possibly could. If I had even finer sandpaper, I would have liked to have used that to clear up a little bit of the scratches, but because I'm going to be doing some painting and priming, I wasn't super concerned. I was really excited to test out this Iwata Eclipse um, airbrush that I've had for a while now That's it's been getting delayed my ability to use this thing. So I hooked it up to my compressor and they had sent me this to test out and I've been again really excited to use this as well as a bunch of paints and I'd like to say that everything went well, but boy, did it not. Um, I ran into a ton of issues, not with the airbrush itself or the paints. Those all worked really well. Uh, my my compressor is a really cheap Harbor Freight compressor that I got a couple years ago, and it is producing a ton of moisture that is basically spraying water while I'm spraying the paint and causing all sorts of issues. So uh, I need to look into getting some additional hardware for that compressor to see if I can fix it. And if not, possibly just getting a better compressor. But I did spend some time airbrushing and just could not get any kind of consistent sprays because it just kept shooting out water. And then also he fell over, so his chin got kind of jacked up. So I decided that we will revisit the airbrush when I've got a chance to do a bit more uh, experimenting with it and I'll maybe even do a live stream where I just kind of like set up and we'll airbrush and hang out that sounds kind of fun so I went ahead and sanded away all of the kind of built up watery paint that the airbrush had produced because of that compressor and I also sanded down his chin where it had fallen over and kind of built up or flaked I made a last minute run down to Home Depot and got a can of primer paint which was in luck of the irish green which looks awesome and i went ahead and applied i believe roughly three coats so i just went over uh, back and forth three coats i let it dry for about 20 ish minutes between each coat and then i filled it with a gloss uh, a gloss clear coat after i did two coats of gloss uh, clear coat and then i let him dry and I think the end result turned out awesome. Initially, I did want to have him in full color, kind of like he's depicted in the channel's graphic, but considering, and just the fact that I haven't, again, done much post-processing of prints as far as painting goes, I was really pleased with the end result and think that he turned out awesome. I could have done a little bit more sanding on those parts where the drain holes were, because you could still kind of see them through showing a bit, but still, I consider this a serious win, and I am incredibly happy with the way that this ModBot robot turned out. Um, the Chaos Cortex did a fantastic job of modeling him. The Phenom did a great job of printing it and again I will <laughs> do my own horn a little bit because I'm very pleased with the end result uh, and again how this model turned out. I hope that you found this video useful and that you learned a few things that will help to make you more successful when printing large prints on a resin 3D printer. If you have been printing or do have a large form factor resin 3D printer and you've got any additional tips or tricks that you think are useful, please let us know those in the comments down below. There has been some awesome uh, tips, things I've learned, things others have learned, and the comments is a great place to share those things. Also, if you have any questions on anything I talked about in this video or maybe didn't mention, you can also put those down in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer those for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single week, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. 
A huge thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. I really appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content each and every week for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.